Can equality and freedom truly coexist? Or are they concepts forever at odds, destined to pull society in opposite directions? This provocative question sets the stage for our exploration, inspired by the penetrating insights of Friedrich A. Hayek. So dear listeners, as we delve into this intricate dance of political philosophy, economic theory, and human aspiration, I welcome you to a journey that promises not only to challenge, but to enlighten. Hayek posited a compelling argument regarding equality and freedom, suggesting that treating people equally inevitably results in inequality in their actual positions. This notion, deeply embedded in his work Constitution of Liberty, highlights the paradox of striving for material equality versus equality before the law. It brings to light the inherent conflict between these two ideals, suggesting that a pursuit of one may undermine the other. This foundational idea sets the stage for our exploration as we consider how equality and freedom intersect and diverge in the fabric of society. Fascism, as Hayek observed, is not a standalone ideology, but rather the consequence of communism's failure. This statement, reflecting on the cyclical nature of political extremes, underscores the dangers of ideologically driven movements that promise utopia but deliver tyranny. It prompts us to question the sustainability of systems that pledge to rectify social injustices through authoritarian means. This exploration of fascism and communism serves as a sobering reminder of the thin line between idealism and despotism. The argument for liberty, according to Hayek, is not an argument against organization, but against coercive, monopolistic control. This distinction is crucial in understanding the balance between individual freedom and societal order. It underscores the potential of human reason to harness the power of organization for collective benefit without succumbing to the tyranny of monopolistic authority. This insight invites us to contemplate the structures within which freedom and organization can coexist harmoniously, fostering a society that values both individual initiative and collective progress. Hayek's critique of socialism stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of economic principles by its advocates. This assertion challenges us to consider the complexities of economic theory and the practical implications of ideological commitments on economic policies. The critique serves as a reminder of the importance of grounding social and political aspirations in economic reality, lest they lead to unintended consequences that undermine the very goals they seek to achieve. Economics, in Hayek's view, is about illuminating the limits of human knowledge and design in the face of complex societal structures. This perspective, encapsulated in The Fatal Conceit, The Errors of Socialism, invites us to humble ourselves before the complexity of economic systems and recognize the limits of our ability to engineer society according to predetermined designs. It challenges us to embrace the emergent, often unpredictable, outcomes of human interaction within free markets, acknowledging the role of spontaneity in achieving societal order. The freedom of thought, according to Hayek, is not a privilege to be allocated by those in power, but a fundamental right inherent to all individuals. This principle, though perhaps of direct significance to only a minority, forms the bedrock of a free society. It raises crucial questions about who, if anyone, has the right to dictate the boundaries of acceptable thought and challenges the presumption of any group to impose their beliefs on others. This exploration of freedom of thought invites us to consider the conditions under which intellectual freedom can flourish, unrestricted by coercive consensus. The increasing role of the state in planning, Hayek warns, inversely affects the individual's ability to plan their own life. This observation invites us to reflect on the balance between state intervention and individual autonomy. 
It prompts a critical examination of how the expansion of state power, under the guise of planning for the collective good, can encroach upon personal freedoms and stifle individual initiative. Monopolistic control, especially when exercised by the state, poses a significant threat to freedom, according to Hayek. His analysis in The Road to Serfdom warns of the dangers inherent in granting absolute economic power to any authority. This perspective encourages us to consider the implications of economic centralization on individual choice and the inherent value of competition and market diversity as safeguards against tyranny. The erosion of individualist virtues such as independence, self-reliance, and the willingness to bear risks in favor of collectivist demands for obedience is a trend Hayek critically examines. This shift, he argues, leaves a void that collectivism cannot fill, challenging us to consider the societal implications of diminishing these virtues. It invites a reflection on the importance of fostering an environment where individual initiative is encouraged and valued as a cornerstone of a vibrant and resilient society. Hayek's contention that the pursuit of social justice often undermines individual freedoms brings to the forefront the complex relationship between collective ideals and personal liberties. This observation prompts us to critically evaluate the implications of policies aimed at achieving social justice questioning whether they inadvertently erode the juridical safeguards that protect individual freedom. The faith in freedom as articulated by Hayek rests not on its immediate outcomes, but on the belief that it ultimately fosters more good than harm. This principle challenges us to adopt a long-term perspective on the value of freedom recognizing its potential to unleash human creativity and innovation for the betterment of society. It invites us to consider the ways in which freedom, despite its uncertainties, serves as a fundamental driver of human progress. Hayek's disillusionment with popular literature, as expressed during his visit to Brentano's bookshop, reflects a broader concern about societal values and intellectual engagement. This anecdote invites us to reflect on the quality of public discourse and the types of ideas that capture the collective imagination. It challenges us to consider the role of intellectual curiosity and critical thinking in shaping a society that values depth and substance over superficiality. The assertion that only a government with totalitarian powers can achieve material equality highlights the inherent tension between individual freedom and the quest for equality. This observation invites us to critically examine the trade-offs involved in pursuing material equality through state intervention, questioning whether such an approach inevitably leads to the curtailment of personal liberties. The erosion of individual liberty in the face of emergencies, as Hayek points out, is a recurring theme throughout history. This insight serves as a cautionary tale about the ease with which crises can be exploited to expand state power, often at the expense of personal freedoms. It challenges us to remain vigilant against the incremental encroachments on liberty, especially during times of perceived urgency. Hayek's emphasis on the importance of decentralized decision-making and the role of competition in fostering societal order underscores the limitations of central planning. This perspective invites us to appreciate the complexity of societal systems and the value of allowing multiple independent actors to contribute to the emergence of order. It highlights the benefits of a system that values the diverse contributions of individuals recognizing that the collective wisdom of many often surpasses the limited knowledge of the few. As we conclude our exploration, let's try to find a statement that encapsulates Hayek's vision. The essence of a free society lies not in its ability to enforce uniformity, 
but in its capacity to embrace diversity, not in the concentration of power, but in its distribution, and not in the certainty of design, but in the beauty of spontaneous order. In this light, the quest for liberty and equality becomes not a zero-sum game, but a delicate balance, a dance of principles that, when navigated with wisdom, can lead to a society that respects individual freedoms while fostering a sense of collective responsibility. Thank you, dear listeners, for joining me on this journey through the complex interplay of freedom, equality, and the human aspiration for a just society. As we ponder these ideas, let us remain committed to the pursuit of a world that values the dignity of the individual and the power of community, recognizing that the true measure of our progress lies not in the uniformity of our circumstances, but in the richness of our diversity. Until we meet again, I bid you farewell and thank you for your time and attention.